Hi, I'm Maya Van Rossum, the Delaware Riverkeeper. The Delaware Riverkeeper Network is conducting a series of interviews to take a critical look at the shale gas industry and its impacts on our environment, on our communities, and on our future. In this segment, I'm going to be joined by Leslie Sauer, who's a pioneer in the field of restoring and managing native landscapes. We're going to be talking about the effects of shale gas pipeline construction on forests, on wetlands, on our communities, as well as alternatives to the destructive construction techniques that are now used by pipeline companies. But I'd like to look at a little bit at why pipeline standards are so low right now. Part of the problem is that FERC establishes the standards. It's a kind of one-size-fits-all approach. It's a very minimum standard. It does nothing to protect the landscape. It doesn't even restabilize the landscape afterwards. But as I mentioned, our concern is compliance, not performance. There's limited advocacy for natural areas. There just is not the lobbying power, uh, despite the work of many, many organizations, land trusts, the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, uh, Nature Conservancy. Many groups are working very hard, uh, but their clout uh, given the scale and magnitude of the destruction has not kept pace at all with what we're looking at. There is no large-scale agency oversight. I know there's been uh, real pressure to uh, ask the DRBC to take some jurisdiction, uh, but in fact the large-scale cumulative effects of all this work are not being looked at at all. What we have instead is a kind of patchwork of partial protections, a little wetlands protection over here, cultural resources over there, uh, rare uh, endangered and threatened species protections uh, in some places. But in fact, the bottom line is there's so little monitoring done that we don't even really know uh, what resources we are impacting and that works out very, very conveniently uh, for the pipeline companies. Uh, and the fact that they are looking at like upwards of 90 plus percent failures on compliance, uh, you can see why. Uh, it's very easy to maintain such low standards. And without uh, sta the various states, and especially multi-state agencies, and a lot of people really stepping up, uh, we are not going to see uh, this change, in part because there are seriously declining returns in this business. Uh, gas prices are extraordinarily low, uh, and it is difficult uh, to make a case for spending more money I found it interesting when talking to the DRBC, the head of the Corps of Engineers asked me about price. And I pointed out that the pipelines that we worked on, uh, we did in the open marketplace and they didn't cost any more than uh, doing it poorly. Possibly it would cost you a little more to do it well now. The uh, level to which they have dropped, the kind of race to the bottom in terms of the standards here. And with these extraordinarily rushed deadlines where things are wavered and accepted, uh, we are seeing some really serious problems. Why should we take action? Well, we should take action because these are very, very dramatic changes that are happening in the watershed. And despite the fact that we have not had big successes in having agencies confront these problems, we have to. We finally have to come together uh, and address it. Um, and this network of pipelines is going to explode across the Delaware uh, River Valley. Uh, people are very upset about one pipeline right now, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, 